So in order for us to answer this question, we're going to follow a seven step strategy. And of course, the first step is to read the problem carefully, which I presume we've done already. And then what we want to do is draw a diagram if possible. The question notes here that this coffee pot can be imagined to be a perfectly circular cylinder. And so we've drawn a circular cylinder over here that would represent the diagram. Now we need to introduce notation. And that means we need to assign symbols to all quantities that are functions of time. We're going to talk about that right now. I apologize that it's a little bit tiny here, but it does say that the water level is rising at the rate of 0.5 inches per second. In these problems, when you see quantities expressed as inches per second or centimeters per hour or miles per minute, any type of measurement in which a distance is divided by a time, that is a rate. And of course, it even says rate right here. And that rate pertains to the water level. Now, in the original diagram, they labeled the water level as H, which is basically the height of the water from the bottom of the cylinder. But because this is a rate, we're not going to say that the height is 0.5 inches per second. We're going to say that the rate of change in the height is 0.5 inches per second. In symbolic form, the rate of change in the height per unit time would be dh dt. So in essence, dh dt is what equals the 0.5 inches per second. So that's going to be very important here. And that kind of ties into step four when it says express the given information and the required rate in terms of derivatives. And so we've kind of already done that with the height, but we should also do that with what we're looking for. It says, what is the rate in inches cubed per second at which water is flowing into the coffee pot? Now, inches cubed per second hopefully is indicative to us of volume. So we can symbolize what we're looking for as dv dt. That would be the rate of change in the volume of the water per unit time or per second in this case. So those are our derivatives. We also have the radius labeled R in this problem, which has a value of three inches. So we've expressed all of the knowns and unknowns and symbolic terms. Now, importantly, we need an equation that relates all of these together. Now, of course, we have a cylinder, we have volume, we have radius, we have height we probably ought to use the equation for the volume of a cylinder, which is pi times radius squared times height. So that would be the equation that pertains in this question. We now, in step six, use a chain rule to differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to t. Now, let's talk about something very important regarding the radius. Imagine that the water is filling up the coffee pot slowly but surely, and then ask yourself, as the height of the water increases, is the radius changing? And if you think about that, you should realize that even though the height is increasing, the radius isn't changing. And so it's important for us to understand that the radius in this problem is a constant. It is not a variable, it isn't changing. And so in fact, if the radius is constant, then radius squared is constant, and overall, pi times radius squared is also constant. So we have a constant sitting in front of our variable h, and so when we differentiate the right side of the equation with respect to time, we keep that constant. You might remember that when a constant is multiplied by your variable, you retain the constant when doing a derivative, and then you multiply that constant by the derivative of h. Now, a lot of people would think the derivative of h right now is equal to 1 because the derivative of x is equal to 1 in most basic derivative problems. But we are differentiating with respect to time. So the derivative of h would not just be 1, but you'd also have to multiply by dh dt. And that is basically an application of the chain rule as indicated in these steps. On the other side, the derivative of volume with respect to time again would be 1 times dv dt. And so just make sure that when you differentiate your variables with respect to time that you always include that notation in which you have the derivative of the variable with respect to time. Now we move to step 7. We substitute in the given information. We have dv dt 
equals pi multiplied by the radius, which was the three inches. Don't forget to square that. And then multiply by dh dt, which is 0.5 inches per second. Now, if we want to leave our answer in terms of pi, we would pick up our calculator and do 3 squared times 0.5. So basically, that's 9 times 0.5. That's going to be 4.5. So you could express the answer as 4.5 pi. If you look at the units, you're going to have inches squared times inches, which gives us inches cubed, and then per second. So it's inches cubed per second. That would be the exact answer. This question wanted us to round our answer to one decimal place. So in fact, let's multiply 4.5 by pi on a calculator, and we're going to get approximately 14.1. And again, that would be in inches cubed per second. So this is the correct answer to the question. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I'd greatly appreciate it. But of course, please do not feel obligated to do so.